When I say steam your, you say dreams. Steam your dreams. Steam your dreams. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so uh, good, good morning. As I was saying, I'm Roman Montego. Uh, you know, I come from a background of uh, information technology, but more importantly, a creative director. I do a lot of immersive technology uh, productions, live events, uh, and this is not my first time moderating or on a panel, but this is my first time at BlurCon, so I'm super excited about meeting every last one of you guys, uh, even though I'm gonna have to run out of here for uh, an end of, uh, we have a summer program and going for our not-for-profit called Steam Your Dreams, which I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna meet them. We're gonna talk, learn a little bit more about that, but we have a championship going on at, in Silver, Spr uh, Silver Springs, Maryland, so I'm gonna run up there, then I'm gonna come back to see if I can play some spades. Who can play spades? Okay. All right, I got my priority straight, though. I mean, you can teach yeah. you play, I can play. Absolutely, I can teach you. I got you. Yeah. 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 Whatever you want to teach you, that's the problem. Yeah. That's your partner right there. That's my partner right there. You already know the rules. You already know the rules. I'm, already, I'm born and raised in Chicago, South okay. South. So y'all already know there's certain rules to the game, right? Y'all know how Chicago is playing spades, right? No? Okay, we rough. We rough. <laughs> um, but in any case, uh, I'm really happy to be here with Blurred Cut 2024. Um, some of you, uh, I'd like to start off by asking you guys, how many of you guys wake up every single morning attached to your phone? For the most part, right. Most right. And that's a generational thing. Like, you know what I mean? It starts early and we get attached. Now the kids are super attached. So now their attention spans of even more. We already think ours attention span like this, like this, but theirs is ain't even a snap. So um, to keep their engagement, uh, it's very hard to do. So you gotta come up with creative ways to do that. So today, you're gonna learn a lot more about how Steam Your Dreams, the organization Steam Your Dreams, uh, introduces uh, e-gaming to get them engaged and of course to motivate them. We do it through gamification. Today, I'd like to introduce my esteemed colleagues uh, and panelists. I'll start off with Ms. Keila Stevens. She is, she is a 20 year plus veteran of information technology, she specializes in security. She's a rock star. She loves giving back to the kids. Ms. Keila, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, you did such a powerful. That was just a quick. It was, it was a quick snippet. Uh, hi everyone, again, thank you for your patience as we got set up. Um, this is my first time to Lurcon, uh, so I'm super excited uh, to meet fellow people in the industry, technical space. You know, I think I would say we're all kind of geeks and nerds of something. So I'm really passionate about technology. As Roman mentioned, I've been in the tech space for. A little over 20 years, it doesn't feel like it, it feels like, you know. It's like, before. Right, <laughs> <laughs> time flies, right? It, does, it really does, does it? Yeah, it does. So I've been in, like I said, I've been in the corporate space for about 20 plus years um, in the tech, technology space. So I have a huge passion for technology and more so now specifically with engaging with our future generation making sure that they're thinking about getting into STEM-based careers. So I've kind of transitioned from the corporate space, more so on the, on the technical side. Like I still support that in certain capacities, but a lot of my energy and my passion goes to Steam Your Dreams. Steam Your Dreams is a nonprofit organization where we provide programming back to the youth on uh, e-gaming and e-sports through technology and really driving that future pipeline. And I'll graduate from Hampton University, uh, which is a HBCU in Hampton, Virginia. All right. Nice. Excellent. Awesome. My young apprentice, uh, Justin Grace, hails from this area, pre PG, PG in the building, and he's a proud uh, student at the University of Maryland. I did that. I always do the little, quick little blur, blur of my intro, but I try to bring you out right. This guy is a super esports e gamer. He's a wonderful game developer and a one wonderful future young uh, talent game publisher and developer. He's working at the DMI production company, Creative Mindset Productions, where we develop games and immersive experiences. Young Justin, say hello to the wonderful people. Blurcon. Thank you very much, Roman. Good morning, everybody. This is my first, not only my first Blurcon, but also my first panel, so super excited. A little bit nervous, but we're gonna go with the flow, see how it is. As I'm introduced, I am Justin Graves. I am currently a senior at the University of Maryland in Immersive Media Design, which is a next generation major that intersects the Department of Computer Science and Department of Arts in interactions with how we perceive technology, evolving augmented reality, virtual reality, 
game development in all of those spaces, especially now with the metaverse becoming a thing. I have seen way too many Apple Vision Pro glasses being used on my campus. <laughs> <laughs> but again, why are we here again? Again, because we believe that gamification, education, it, you take you take Steam and you miss that with, uh, or education, you miss that with eGame is a great way to engage all audiences. Because I can tell you right now, I got about 10 games on my phone. Some of them aren't the ones I created. But these guys right here know how important it is for us to reach the youth and, and get them engaged because their, their attention span is, their attention span is so short, right? So we found out that we, we have some serious issues coming up in our, with climate control. For instance, we need to do some things about climate control. We need to do things about uh, uh, world population and the food shortages. So how do we get the kids in involved in some of this technology, stuff like that? We have to start steaming dreams. What is that? What's what? <laughs> I like being interactive. I, I'm going to answer this question right off the bat because everybody's asked about this. So I went to uh, CEC, keep the short, I'll keep the story short. This is a touch screen computer and it's, pa it's, it's called a pack and go. And I went to CES looking for this thing. I, looked, I went for this, but I also went to CES last year looking for controllers. Consumer Electronics Show. It is absolutely huge, wonderful, and large, a lot of great activities. So I found this bad boy. It, it literally is a touch screen computer. And it's like one of our big, you know, that's an eight inch tablet that you guys have the chance to work with. But this is 27 inch. Okay, so, but anyway. So normally when, um, when uh, Stevie Dreams gets involved with kids, Especially when they bring a program, we start off with a pre-assessment, then we do um, some training and slash education. Um, and J Justin, tell me about some benefits of gamification while I'm getting this set up. For us, Roman, these I'm not gonna lie, usually have been experiencing firsthand, mainly because of IMD. But one of the main ones are, of course, increased engagements. Now, granted, I'm only 21, so I was granted in the stages of high school where. Every single day, or almost every single day, there was some kind of group being used. That got way too competitive for our likes, so... I know for a fact that that increases engagement, it actually made us want to learn the topics that are being used. Somehow that made me learn physics, I'm not going to question how. <laughs> but of course, that also leads to motivation, so... I know at least for myself, I am a victim of it as well. But I have been so connected to my devices, especially back in high school, that I was like, I don't know if I really want to do my high school work right now, blah blah, I, you know, I'll just put this off until the real last minute that I'm up at 11.59 trying to pray that I get these done before I would get the zero. <laughs> Fortunately, I did not get the zeros. But thanks to gamification and actually using some of these talents, such as, I remember in CompSci, I used code.org, it actually made me want to continue it and like, okay, I'm not going to get zero, I'm actually interested in being engaged with this material. And also, this is at least something that I witnessed as, besides helping Roman with creating my productions as an intern developing, I've also been with Senior Dreams as a coach. We've been in Baltimore for the past three weeks preparing for our old school programming, but also in terms of skill development and actual cognition skills. I've seen firsthand, especially with Baltimore youth, there is a giant literacy gap and there is also a giant hand-eye coordination gap. But with the games that we have, that you will hopefully see soon, I've actually noticed improvements in hand-eye coordination over the past three weeks. I've noticed actually several students pick up on certain patterns within the game. Yeah. That actually allowed them to somehow beat me, which I'm still, <laughs> I have to have a rematch with some of the You're kids. I don't have oh, a rematch. We take, we take it serious. We don't let the kids beat us. <laughs> oh, no, Listen, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> I'll have that little rematch. So again, you can imagine this was supposed to go HDMI to this thing, so do me a favor. I don't see it popping up on that one, on a little bigger screen, but it is right here, the QR code for Minty Meter. We're going to be a little interactive again. We kind of take you into a world where we show you how gamification really does drive engagement. Even, even for fan experiences, when you come to an expo, and Miss Keela can add a little, uh, amplify this a little bit more about how she, when she goes for panels speaking at some of her engagements, how you see certain uh, fan experiences are uh, improved from that. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, in order to keep people connected, engaged in topics, uh, conferences, you know, QR, QR codes are a big thing. Um, when it comes back to time back information, data sources or points, you, know, you see a lot of um, 
just interconnection with QR codes and the audience to just learn more. And this world where, you know, what drives us, what keeps our attention. So do we understand the gravity of the situation? So I kind of decided to see how many folks were so super sharp and remember their physics in school about what some terms about gravity. So we're going to take a pre-assessment by using Mentimeter. If it comes up. There you go. All right, so I'm going to hit enter to start the quiz. You guys are ready? Question one of three. We press enter to start the quiz. Answer fast to get more points. Subject is gravity. Two people got right. Subject is gravity. That's why I started with that title. I should have done a better title, right? Yeah. But we're, that question was, which of the four fundamental forces in physics, strong, um, strong nuclear, electric weak, electrostatic, or gravitational, is the least understood? And the answer was gravitational, right? So, and that's based upon this next question I'm gonna give you guys. And I see two of y'all got it right. Who got it right? Because it doesn't say. It's not like Kahoot. Oh, yeah. Anybody know about Kahoot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, not answered correct. Because we, we actually interact, I know they do, interact with our audiences, whether adults or kids, in the same kind of manner where it's not about putting you in a position where you're dumb or whatever, making you feel insecure about not knowing something. It really is about, especially pre-assessment, is to have fun like this. You guys are seeing that? Where it's leaderboard, it's activity, you get points for stuff, and the Jews are prize in war. So that's a true gamification. So congratulations to Zoltan um, for 2,613 uh, uh, 2, points. But I got another other question for you guys real quick. What is a black hole? Because you feel it's a deep space and you, you never come out, uh, out here again. <laughs> well, we don't know, but hey, I heard. But we're gonna see how people can give me an answer to that. But that's a great point. Anyway, so um, you got a fact that gravitational pull here. I, I did all the research on it, so I knew the answer. But you can see that it's about education now. Once you get someone engaged, now you gotta educate them or train them and get them instructed on your brand or your subject, for this matter, for any type of education. So in this case, I'm gonna ask Mr. Keela Stevens, what is steam? Yeah, and that was a good segue when you were talking about, um, you know, you're not an expert in science. So STEAM uh, represents science, technology, engineering, art, and math. With STEAM, the nice part about STEAM, it's a, a holistic approach to how we learn. You don't have to be an expert, subject matter expert, in all areas of Seen. Like when we go and engage the kids, we don't expect them to know everything about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. But seeing it is a holistic approach to how kids learn. It touches on every little aspect of science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And what you'll realize now with art now being included as a part of STEM, you know, STEM was always around, but now you'll start hearing more about STEAM. Art is included as a part of STEAM. When you're talking about creativity, um, fostering creativity, innovation, being more inclusive, just having art as a part of STEM is a, an important part of that holistic curriculum. Oh, so you're basically saying with STEAM, some of the benefits of it, um, that you can see personally for what you said. You've been doing this for over three years and helping out multiple kids in Baltimore, and DC, the DMV, and in Tampa. Yeah. So what are some of the benefits of STEAM? Yeah, so STEAM, some of the benefits for STEAM, you know, it's really just the connection to understanding uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. What is e-gaming and e-sports? That one, Black Jazz, because that is the area of expertise, seeing as I grew up mainly playing nothing but video games when I stopped. Tell these good, fine, young people <laughs> what it's all about. It. Of course, so e-gaming obviously is electronic gaming. Any form of games you play, doesn't matter what device, your phone, tablet, even GameCube or Game Boys back in the day, which I never got to experience, sadly, though I wish I did, and may have to track out a vintage copy. That is where you're actually fostering those growths in terms of sportsmanship, in terms of competitiveness, and in terms of especially things like hand-eye coordination, and you're actually creating those and fostering those creative juices within you. Now, in terms of esports, which was I would say probably we know most esports nowadays from 2011 with League of Legends because they're the ones who kind of set it right with Riot Games. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm glad that you said it was Zox because that's actually going to bring me to one of my good points. So in terms of esports, obviously electronic sports. Nowadays we know that as, you know, Fortnite programs, the Legend of World Championship Series. Um, Call of Duty, I forgot exactly what term it's out that way it's called, but Street Fighter, um, EVO, that one as well, though EVO, I think it's actually making a resurgence, which I'm happy about. EVO, um, that's coming up this week. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm probably going to be watching that whenever I have the off time, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, esports, we consider it as a 1.0 to 2.0. 1.0, we all know that now. That is the multi-billion dollar productions, high quality. That's where you see you know, most of these, I say, center around mainly fighting games, shooters, stuff like that. That's more, I would say, on the violent side, but it's also, as we've seen, and as some people have heard through stories of where it be streamers, or where it be through things that some of us may have heard in game chats. I'm not gonna talk about the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 days in my oh, warfare. God, no. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about those days. But unfortunately, it also seemed to trigger a more toxic side that we do not want to continue to bear and witness. And granted, also Esports 1.0, you're kinda of seeing, you know, more of the, I don't wanna to say too repetitive, but you can certainly notice a theme with a lot of these tournaments that are going on first. So nowadays, what is Esports 2.0 look like? That is a term that was coined by none other than, of course, Mr. Bottega right here. <laughs> Some of us so in what? the esports community. Some of us in esports. You're right. We can help coin that phrase because this young gentleman can just play a little bit better than I can right now these days oh. because he, he does a lot more directing than I do in production. So, where do we see esports trying to head now? Of course, one of the main things is trying to, of course, curb that toxic energy that we all see, where it be the Call of Duty, Valorant, especially League. I'm not going to mention any times I've been mid lane and heard something. But Esports 2.0, that's more the times where we're actually seeing a lot more independent engagement because as we know, and as some people have probably seen for things like E3 or Summer Game Fest this year, a lot of more things are becoming more independent developer driven, especially with um, now, what was it? Arslov was announced at Summer Game Fest. They're now doing, and they're now funding independent developers. We're seeing more and more actual new concepts, whether it be through virtual reality games or whether it be through, I'll say even written games or more how you actually interact with them. More coming from these independent developers with small budgets. That's what Esports 2.0 is all about. Bringing that more niche population, especially the less than 2% black game developers, into this mix and making these making esports more accessible than having to be on a ultra superstar team like Base Clan or Cloud9 or um, Sentinel. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to remember all these, all these teams because I'm trying to... Yeah, what about that independent game you're working on as a black game developer? What, I, the like, I like the segue. <laughs> of course, I am, yep, I, am for, I am fortunate enough to be considered part of that with my RPG that I'm working on with a couple students from University of Maryland called Reforge. I'll hopefully have more details this August, so it cannot come for me yet. What type of game is it? Well, it's more of an RPG and more a cell shaded. You guys know what style. an RPG is? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Well, he's developing a cool one, so we'll, we'll, we'll look for that. What I like about it, we'll come back to that VR part because I want to be a little interactive. I love being interactive, by the way. Um, but one thing that uh, I want to make sure I amplify about Esports 2.0 is that the indie part. Uh, in the industry, of video game industry, there's less than 4% black game developers. Less than 2% black black game publishers. And that includes the bio block of black and brown, by the way. So you can imagine me being a black game developer and publisher, I'm part of that small bit. So what we've, we've, we've seen that you can easily develop more games now because of the technology. I used to, it used to take years to develop a game between animation, music, so forth and so forth. Now with AI, and of course, uh, when you need additional workforce. So here's a tip, say for instance, you got a great design for a game or whatever, right? You might come to somebody like me who's a natural, my gift so I can draw, paint, and play music by ear. I played music by ear since I was six. But I can also draw and paint. But I, I just evolve into a better storyteller. So I, I, if you come to me as a game developer and say, let's work on a game, 
majority of times now my workforce, my, my, my heavy lift is done overseas. I go through Upwork, I go through Fiverr, I go through these, these tools to help me develop and design a game. That's no secret. And I'm not trying to hold a secret from you guys on how I help publish more games. Because right now, I'm at five published titles, which will be available better later on this year on iOS and Android. And also um, on, we're developing an Xbox game right now, which is a little more US because uh, we're, we're trying to use that off a of grant. So I just want to give myself a plug because I want you, you guys, I want to give, I want you guys to give me a hand because again, less than four percent, two percent black folks and brown folks in the video game industry. The video game industry, by the way, is about four hundred and eighty-five billion dollars. It's bigger than the entertainment industry, the music industry. It's bigger than the NFL, NBA, all that put together. It still doesn't equate to the video game industry. All right, give, y'all can y'all give me a hand. We got we got. We gotta help uh, push that a little bit more, right? Because when we know better, we do better. So I want to go back to this real quick, and then I'm coming back to an interactive thing I like to do with the crowd. How many folks figured this out? That the comic book it says, according to the comic book resource CBR.com website, the anime character has the strongest use of power grabbing. If y'all don't know it already, I love anime too. I love gaming. I love anime. So I I, I, drew, I personally made my kids watch Dragon Ball Z with me. Now they can't. Now my son keeps buying those little bubble things. What are they call oh, bubble heads? <laughs> Every single time. Right. I was in out in L.A. and for their anniversary, him and his fiance brought um, matching bobbleheads for each other that look each other. So is it anyway? Anyway, <laughs> long story short, who is this wonderful cool guy that has the power of gravity? He's he according to that website, he's supposed to have the strongest power of gravity. Did you guys figure it out? These people no. said. From the black clover, clover, can't remember who said that. Okay, okay, I think it, was, it starts with an M too. Uh, Captain Yami, that's from um, black clover. Okay, I thought that was from um, one uh, piece. Yeah, one piece. Thank you. Glowing eye, glowing eye man. I don't know who that is. <laughs> food, food. Glowing eye, eye glowing man. Glowing eye man. Glowing eye man. <laughs> <laughs> Quite obvious. <laughs> Lord Dante, who got that? Okay, how did you guys get that ass? Oh, I'm Google. Oh. <laughs> 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 you gave me too much time. I gave you too much time. You gave me the website. Who am I not to use it? <laughs> give me some. Give me some. The reality is, is Google is your best friend. <laughs> Do y'all see what happened right there? I gave them time, plus they already, everybody's already attached to their phones, we're being interactive. You were in front of listening to her, you're still able to process that data, plus you saw I had something for you to do on the screen here, and then, I didn't have an answer for you, a lot of us not super, super had to be crazy, right? We didn't know every single character. Guess what they did? And guess what kids do? Guess what everybody pretty much does if you have a little time, you think about it, they went to the website, they saw the clues, and they go went and found that information and learned themselves. Why are we making education so hard? Think about it. Why are we doing that when there's Google, YouTube available where we can say, hey, hey kid, have some time by yourself because a lot of kids have anxiety or learning disabilities or whatever. Sometimes they learn better by themselves. They don't want you picking on them. But if you get them an opportunity to say, hey, still learn this. And then you can have a conversation about it more. Can you tell us a little bit more about Lord Dante? Why you looked him up? Anything, you get, anything to share about his grammar? Anyway, let's be a little interactive here again. You ready for this? Let's go back to that VR thing. Virtual reality. Yep, virtual reality. So say for instance, to solve some of our biggest issues in the black and brown community, which, um, say for instance, some of the things that we're faced with, high blood pressure, heart disease, these things like this. You, if you had to educate the greater good of people, I'm gonna start with the panel. So the panel, I'm gonna start you off by saying VR wise. Let's pretend we have a, a game and you guys Give us a feature where we develop that game. We're gonna kind of be brainstorming right now. It's a brainstorming session. So that, again, let's improv. Let's imagine a healthcare tech VR simulation where participants complete a course on CPR. I start with you guys on the first. What's the next thing you would want to do for that? Um, so if I complete a course on C CPR, I would want it to be tracked somehow. Am I getting a certificate? Certificate. Of some sort? Reward. A reward. What about you? I would go one step farther yeah. and say that I know for a fact that usually courses, at least for um, PGCC, I just said, I said that because I'm a PGCC plug, 
things like BGCC, things like Red, they do have free ones, but more so this actually counts and it's actually saved within some sort of actual repository where you can go to an actual more advanced course after this one if you want to. Right. The, thing, the thought is, we're designing a game to help teach CPR to our community. I, I didn't do blood pressure and that high tech stuff. I said we're using VR as a game because we're gamifying that experience. We need to educate, we need to engage them, we need to educate, and then of course we need to retain them, right? And convert them. So they started off by saying a reward system, which of course, right, it's, when you're doing some kind of education system, you gotta have some kind of awards, right? What do you get, a certificate for completing the course? She went all the way to the, sometimes you begin with the end in mind. Right, you go, you define the end, the result, so you can then walk yourself backwards to start from the top. So, she, and then he went a little bit further with a lot more greater detail around the CPR um, functionality certificates. So, what you got? Uh, I guess in developing it, a uh, narrative. I'd start with a narrative of why game story. You would, uh, you would need to know this. Yep. Um, I'd have like a, a music selection because a lot of the time when they teach CPR for the appropriate rhythm, they have not have you sing a song or whatever, like, like PG, Stay Alive. Is one of the Didn't even know that. Yeah, um, yeah. There's, oh, wow. there's several different songs um, that, that kind of keep it in mind so you have the appropriate rhythm. That's dope. Sir? Yeah, so along with that, I would imagine that you would go into a room and there would be like a, a 3D figure laying on the ground. It would be see-through though, so you would actually see organs underneath that. Yeah. And going with the rhythm thing, it would have you do the press, but it would be like one of the, the rhythm games where you see it go by and close it. You have to hit it at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad. Single and team play. Ah, okay. okay so, uh, yeah. We had to do CPR in junior high school physical ed class. So yeah. everyone graduated. I mean, everybody came out there with a certificate. Yeah. But we had had to do single, like by ourselves, yeah. and we had to do a team exercise as well. And like, if there's a drowning instead of come on now, come on now. That's what I was thinking. You do rescue breaths. Yeah, the drowning where you wouldn't necessarily do so. If somebody just had a heart attack yeah. or something like that. And the reason why VR is so cool, as y'all can imagine is I can put you in that world and I don't have to put you in that real world situation. I can actually take you to a beach and you're playing lifeguard that day. So that's pretty cool about VR and VR technology and getting Kate cool. Um, how about AR? Oh, I'm going around, that's our favorite. So, like, instead of, because we didn't have, we had the dogs, but we didn't have visual feedback. The AR could be the visual feedback for the scenario. And it yeah. be more tactical. Yeah. Um, because uh, like muscle memory comes into play, as you said, with the hand-eye coordination, uh, muscle memory comes into play too. And you'll find that people who actually write things down tend to process and remember a lot better than people with this type. Oh, absolutely, man! So I, I love this panel. How we were, we would have had these these interact sessions, but. I think you really came in to see if we probably will let y'all play some games. Y'all ready to see how y'all do? Let's see how many people, because what's going to happen, these are some of the games I developed with my good young assistant and of course implemented in the field with my good friend Miss Akilah Stevens at Steam Your Dreams. What you're going to see experience in this game are power-ups. There will be questions that pop up in the game. If you ask the question correct, you will get either a basket. So the first game, play balling out on the big touch screen. You seem to have love back and go, so you want to be first? <laughs> And she was waiting outside, so why don't you come up first? Come on down, y'all. Give her a hand, y'all. <laughs> if I had the music, da 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 You see, I'll have no music. <laughs> Let's see if Whitney can remember. Did you get any questions wrong? Yes. Okay. <laughs> any questions? So, okay, you, you might experience some of those same questions in the game. Okay. All right. There you go. Yes. Let's see what you got. Of course you got wolf. Of course you got wolf. Let's see your points and stuff like that. And let's see what question you got that you had got into. Okay, so see the question yeah. that popped up. So it's green, meaning that the answer was so you got it right. So go. All right. So you want to try again? Yeah. Yeah, because that was just a formal. Okay. okay. Yeah. This was a bit laggy, unfortunately. I think another fix to that right away.
connected anyway first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You still remember the password, Gil? Go after a while, you'll get the hell just like easy peasy. Let's see. Let's see what you did. Look, I already know what you did. I saw. I saw. Look, she won ten to five and balling out. So we want to thank our our team founders, Mr. Justin Graves. Again, give it up for Justin Graves. Let's get up for Mr. Keila Stevens. I've been your moderator and your host, and Roman Sudan Montaguayo. And this is our LinkedIn. To our our profile, please follow and share, and let's stay in contact because we're here to do exactly what y'all do, which is blurt out and have fun. But we're so glad to do Steam eGame and show you what how how we've combined uh, you know education and eGame and eSports to engage, inspire, and empower kids in the STEM careers. And that's pretty dope. We're cool.